Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Lone Wolf Challenge. In the last episode, Canvas, our first lone wolf, began his story in a bit of a sad way. Unfortunately, the life of a lone wolf wasn't his decision to make. He was actually ousted by his soon-to-be mate, Sila, right after they had made it to this big giant island to start their family. One of you had a really good idea. Maybe Canvas has been using the berry juices to make markings for himself long before we land on this island. So once we finally did make it here, that's when those berry juices were washed off, perhaps by the journey through the ocean itself. Maybe that's why Sila was so willing to push him away. She felt like he was lying to her all along. But ever since, he has discovered a family that accepts him much more than she did. Anna actually bears the same curse. Hers is a little bit different though. She has the albinism trait, which means she was hiding these dots under her fur. So Takir has blessed their babies. Fawn and Odin both have those spots too. They actually look like little paint splatters. We have the snowy spots on Fawn, and Odin is basically her opposite. He has muddy spots instead. I wonder if maybe Odin will be very good at sneaking? I feel like those muddy spots would help him blend into the scenery, and that might help us once we go back to our previous base too. This place was unfortunately taken over by Beryinas, but we do have a brand new guard in our midst. So Kiernuta arrived just in time with his big giant claw, and I'm hoping that he's going to be able to hunt down the Beryinas for us. I'm not sure where they could have roamed off to now. They haven't actually followed our tribe so hopefully we'll be able to keep Canvas and Anna away. I feel like that bright white snowy fur, the blank canvas of their appearance is probably drawing the predators in our direction. That's why it's a good thing that we have the spots now, because that's actually going to, well, kind of increase our camouflage. We're not exactly in a jungle right now, but the darker fur color is definitely helping. So as far as Kiernuta's story goes, I wonder if perhaps he's been hunting these Beryinas for quite some time. He is actually an older creature, so he strikes me as somebody who would be like a grizzled old warrior, somebody who's seen his fair share of scraps. Maybe he even came down from the stream itself and he decided to take up residence under this tree. The shadiness would probably help him cool down as he picks his berries and just give him a moment to collect his bearings. But the sounds of chaos from our tribe drew him near, and now he's ready to be the hero that our tribe so desperately needs. So I guess we'll have him claw away at some of the grasses with his talons, and then we just have to move little fawn next. Let's have her toddle out of her nest. She can scoot into the grasses, maybe trying to hide herself a little bit better. I feel like she would be a little bit nervous seeing these strangers around the nest, because she definitely strikes me as somebody who's a bit shy. I think we should probably bring her to the shores though. Maybe to the tide pool so she can collect all of those shells that Canvas saw before. Maybe that's what we'll do on this turn, as long as the carnivores aren't near. Oh, hello? Oh my goodness, wait a second. We have another wanderer in the stream? And it looks like she actually has the water body? Oh my goodness, a lurking little fishy spying on her tribe. Well, if Kiernuta did come down from the stream, maybe that drew her attention, or maybe she's been living inside these tide pools all along. So I guess let's bring Canvas over here so we can try to meet her. Is she perhaps stealing our berries? She might be because she does have one velvet paw, but the digging paw could be useful too. That might help us dig up a little bit more food since we are starting to run low. We have many, many more creatures than when Canvas started his journey. We do have some roots in the area as well, so I wonder if she would be willing to help us out? Go ahead and offer up a little bit of food to her, and then we are definitely going to have to collect some more. It's not often that we see our food in the red like this. Maybe it would even be a good idea for Anna to wait to have her next baby. She has plenty of time left on her lifespan after all. Not Canvas, though, and it's going to be a little bit sad if he passes away before he gets to see his next baby, but he has a job to do, too. I wonder if he was afraid that this creature was actually drowning down here at first. It's not as though our creatures know anything about the water bodies. She even has the gills in her inactive traits, and that peacock tail, too. Oh my goodness, 
She must have truly come from a little legion of water-breathing creatures way off in the ocean. I'm going to assume that she probably did see canvas, or maybe one of her ancestors did. I mean, she is awfully young. She wouldn't have been born by the time that canvas showed up on this island. So maybe his reputation has preceded him, and she came here to see the magnificent blank canvas himself. She doesn't have any markings, does she? No, she has the no pattern, but she is carrying those dots again. So it seems like Takir really likes to give our creatures those little paint splatters. It's almost like the slow transformation of his painting skills as he works toward those more intricate patterns. So I suppose if they heard that Canvas was able to receive Takir's blessings, maybe she's hoping to receive the same for her little water-breathing tribe. Well, you can stick around here, Anna Ressi as long as you can find us some more food to eat. I guess now really is a good time for Canvas to take Fawn to the tide pools. So let's have her come away down here, and then we'll probably want Canvas to set up by the water first. Yes, because of that is exactly what I was afraid of. Oh no, who's going to be able to jump down there to save him? He might unfortunately have to pick up the leech on this turn, because Anna Ressi and Fawn both only have a one turn to their name. So instead, let's bring Fawn way over here. The coconut tree is not too far away, so that would probably be a good place for her to set up. She should be able to reach it on the next turn. And we have Clown Koi in the water too. And unfortunately, none of our creatures have a high enough fishing skill to catch those. But maybe we could find some normal fish in the waves for Kiernuta to pick up too. Maybe while he's hunting down those Beryginas, he could even find them in the tide pools as well. Now, Anna Ressi, where are we going to find more roots for you to dig up? It looks like there's one way over here, so I guess we'll have you follow on Canvas's shadow. If she is truly trying to glean a little bit of information from him, figure out why Takir has blessed him so, I guess it would make sense that she would stick really, really close. We'll have her use her energy on the next turn, too, to make sure that Canvas is okay, because goodness knows we don't want him passing early. He only has two days remaining on his lifespan as it is. I wonder too if he's getting a little bit curious. This is going to bring him so very close to the last place that he saw Sila. I wonder if he would want to cross the water to see if she's still there, or if perhaps she's just moved on. Now I guess, Kiernuta, we're going to have to ask you to stay here for a little while longer because we desperately need the food right now. We'll bring Anna back here so she can grab these berries. Thank goodness the bunnies haven't stolen them yet. In fact, I don't think the bunnies are around here at all. One of you had a really, really good idea about the bunnies. Maybe the rabbits actually steal the berries for the paints to give to Takir. So they're not the enemies of Takir, but they're actually working for him. And that would also mean that Vankir is probably not too fond of Takir at all. He just wastes his precious berries instead of storing them away and uses them to decorate his tribe mates. Now Odin... Maybe we could bring you right next to our warrior. I feel like Odin would really want to follow him. And Kiernuta, since they look so similar, maybe he would try to boost Odin's confidence by telling him that Takir gave him those muddy spots for a reason. They will certainly help him go sneaking through that tall grass. So maybe if his mother says it's okay, he could take little Odin out to search for the Baryinas. It's probably going to take quite a bit of convincing on Anna's part. I can't imagine that she would really want to let her little baby out of her sight. Oh, and it looks like the clown koi may have passed. Excellent, so we can use that as a little bit of food too. But first, Anna Ressi, go ahead and pick that leech off of canvas, lick his wounds for us, and then we'll send him off toward the tide pools. He needs all of his energy on this very final day of his after all. If we scoot him over here, he should be able to lead his daughter toward the coconuts. Oh, it looks like there aren't too many over here. There's a one down on the beaches, but that's going to be pretty risky for you. Maybe we should have Anaresi follow Fawn from here on out. Oh, and it looks like you missed the fish. It must have been on one of the other tiles. I think it was literally right here. The poor thing. She's short-sighted too, so she can't even see the fish right in front of her. Well, that's okay, little one. Maybe you and Fawn can grab it on the next turn. Now let's bring Canvas into the water. 
He can dip his toes into those familiar waves and maybe sniff across the tide pools, searching desperately for the creature who banished him so long ago. I think it's just morbid curiosity at this point to see how she fared after she left. After all, Canvas's life has been pretty good. There may have been a few bumps in the road along the way, but now he has a family who truly cares for him and doesn't shun him thanks to his appearance. So the farthest we can bring him is right here. Let's sniff into the waves again. Yeah, unfortunately, no sign of Silum, but I suppose if we see her skeleton pop up somewhere on the shore, that's how we'll know exactly how far she got. She should be passing away on this very same day too, after all. I wonder how close they're going to end up passing together. If she did wander off into the grasses, we might not find her for quite some time, but I'm still going to keep my eyes out. Maybe these two will even run into her. Oh, do you think maybe she ran into the Baryinas? Oh, what if that's why the Baryinas weren't chasing after us, if they caught a whiff of her instead? That would be such a sad way to end her story. Well, Anna, go ahead and gather up all of the rest of these berries, and then maybe we'll have enough food in our tribe to have another baby. We'll have her settle down right here, inside the nest that she made herself, as we pick up some of the last berries with Odin over here. He has those two velvet paws, so he should be able to gather these up faster, and that'll give Kiernuta time to actually carve out a true proper beast for this family. That is probably going to have to be one of their major concerns pretty soon, because all this grass only means more potential for danger to spawn. It's no wonder Kiernuta is the one who is leading this charge. He probably knows that the best if he's been on his own for so long. Now unfortunately today is the day where we're going to be saying goodbye to sweet little Canvas. His entire family will miss him dearly, but he can rest easy knowing that Takir is watching out for them. So let's go ahead and skip the day and watch as he fades into the tide pools. That was just his death sound, right? Sometimes those noises almost sound like a baragina, but it looks like we're still safe. So unfortunately, Fawn, that means that you've kind of been left on your own, but at least you have plenty of these coconuts to gather. We'll have Anaresi jump over here to... Oh geez, swipe up the leech and then pick up the clown koi. Okay, I guess you're going to be on your own for a little bit longer, the poor thing. She's probably so sad too. The rains have come to wash away the last of those berry juices. I wonder if, even though they have actual markings, if they would use the berry juices too. I guess it would be a good way for them to add their own personal touch to their fur patterns. Now it looks like we have another little painted baby in the nest, full of paint splatters just like all of her siblings. But hers are these kind of dusty spots, so each and every one of their children has been completely different. It's too bad that we were never able to pull that cracker jaw out of their genetics. Every single member of our tribe now has the terp now, in fact. But at least with their inactive traits at work, we should eventually see something new if we find them the right partner. So this little baby's name is going to be Aqualu. Welcome to our tribe, little one. That is actually a super cute name, and very fitting too since we have all of these new aquatic creatures joining our tribe. So hopefully Fawn is going to be okay. I wonder if maybe we should have saved her moves for last, just in case any more leeches are lurking about there. Seems like leeches are a pretty common theme in those tide pools. We'll have Anna go ahead and gather all of the berries that she can possibly carry, and I think we're going to have Kiranuta move on from the berry bushes now. Maybe we could have Odin pick up the grass at least, that way we won't lose this. But it's time for you guys to see if you can find the Baryina. Do you think Odin can sneak past his mother? That is going to be pretty tricky. I guess maybe if he takes the outer roots, maybe if he sneaks around in the grasses, that could be a good way for him to test his sneaking abilities as well. He is one stealthy little critter after all, so maybe he'll be able to evade her undetected. Now, Kiernuta, you are going to want to keep sniffing around as you make your way deeper into the grasses. This was about where we saw the Baryina last, after all, right by our healing fruit. So come on over here. No, but it looks like we just have moles out there. The Guardian Mole. The fact that he's out of his burrow is probably a good sign. Maybe that means that the Baryinas have moved on, too. 
The question is, which way did they go? I'm sure that that Baryena baby is all grown up by now. So now we don't have just one Baryena roaming in these grasses. We have two potential dangers to worry about. Well, let's go ahead and skip the day again. Hopefully the sun will return so our creatures can repaint those family markings. Maybe as a way to honor Canvas's memory today. And you know, Odin, this might just be your lucky break. With this bluebird circling overhead, I'm sure that Anna would probably take her eyes off of you just to make sure that her baby is going to be safe. So maybe you can go ahead and sneak through these grasses after all. I can see him getting a little bit too overeager and charging ahead of our grizzled warrior. But let's go ahead and sniff again. Still nothing out here yet. So maybe he would yank Odin back into the grasses and jump ahead. That way he'll be in the front line. Yeah, because it looks like our Baryena is right here after all. One of them, at least. So we don't want you getting too close. But at the same time, I would like to see how much more of its life is left. I wonder if we bring him over here? If that would be enough to draw the Baryena in his direction. As a lone warrior, he's got to come up with some pretty creative ways to take down Baryenas. Now, the coconuts might not offer much in the ways of paints. But I suppose you could always paint them on your own time? Hello, little guy. Oh, is this crab at one of Anna Ressi's friends? Maybe he came deep from the depths of the ocean to make sure that she was okay. To make sure that she is still performing her mission, trying to find a way to bless her family with the patterns. Yeah, I guess if we don't use the coconut husks to paint on, maybe those cracked open shells would be good for storing some of their supplies. Let's bring Fawn up here this time. Maybe she's looking for Anna Ressi. She wants to make sure that she hasn't gotten too far away. And Anna Ressi can guide her little crabbit friend up to the shores as she works to help Fawn collect the food. We'll bring her right back down here. Maybe on the next turn she could knock down some more of these coconuts for her. And we might as well pick up more of these grasses along the way so we can actually see where they land. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just noticed. It looks like Silas stayed here the entire time. Oh my goodness, she never even moved from the ports. That is so strange. Oh, the poor thing. They passed so close to each other. Yeah, something tells me Canvas must have just been gazing out at those ports, watching from afar as the day faded. I wonder if she actually regretted chasing him out like that. Not enough to go seek him out, but just enough to turn back for home on some of her final days. Now poor Anna, it looks like you've been left all alone here with Aqualu. So I guess until our warrior comes back successful from his mission, it's just going to be your job to collect all of the berries. We'll have you tidy up the place too. We might as well grab this old broken nest and we'll move Aqualu over to the permit nest. That way she can get a little bit of extra rest. Now fingers crossed, we'll see the Baryena emerge from the darkness here, coming straight toward Kirnuta. No, I don't think you were able to snag its attention. Oh no, it may have gone even deeper. Well, thankfully, Odin actually has his third and final gem now, so maybe he can help you out a bit more. We'll bring him over here next to the berry bush, revealing the guardian mole right in front of the healing fruit, and we'll have him sniff in the grasses. Well, the baryena is still right there. He may have actually moved a little bit closer, because now we can actually see him from the shore. Oh my gosh, you guys! We have a true baryena family in the grasses now. Oh my gosh! We are going to be overrun by Baryenas soon. Oh, Kiernuta, this is not the sort of information that I was hoping you would find. And he's getting so close to the end of his days. We have to preserve that claw. I wonder if maybe we can have him turn back and start a little family with Fawn. Or maybe even with our little fish. Let's see, he has A and E. He would be compatible with Anna Ressi, and he would be compatible with Fawn as well. So maybe we can raise a little family of soldiers to take down these Baryenas once they grow? There's just no way that Kiernuta is going to be able to take down three Baryenas by himself. I mean, do the Baryenas actually breed if there are this many creatures on the island? 
Or did we just happen to spawn another Baryina with a baby since we were here? Because this Baryina right on the shore is definitely not the one that we attacked. Canvas couldn't do much damage, but he did take one swipe. So if this was the right Baryina, then we would have a little bit of damage on its lifespan. Very, very curious. Maybe these Baryinas are even using the healing fruits and we just didn't notice. So Kiernuta, let's have you start making your way down the shore again. We can have Odin light up the way for you. We'll bring you straight over to the coconut tree where all of our ladies are waiting. And we'll see if you can win anyone over with your charm. I don't know, I can see Fawn being pretty eager to start a family with him. With that claw, she knows that he would definitely be able to protect her. And she is a very timid creature in all honesty. So maybe we'll have these two start a family first. Anaresi might be just as eager, though. He has those beautiful pink spots, almost like the berry juices that Canvas always used. They're a much more permanent solution, too. I guess that's why Anaresi has had so much trouble impressing Takir. If she puts those berry juices on her fur, they're just gonna wash off again when she goes back into the ocean for her family. So I guess that makes you one lucky duck, Kiernuta. You are going to have a nice, big, strong family if all goes well. We only have a few days to set this up. So we'll bring Kiernuta over here, and then we'll have to set up his mutation menu as well. And just like our previous family, we're going to give Takir his full creative control and pick two cosmetic genes with our random number generator. So Fawn has rolled a 31 and a 7. That's pattern shape D, and that's also the white fur. So that's kind of funny. It's almost like Takir is trying to go back to that look of the blank canvas. Maybe he needs to wipe the slate clean before he starts giving us more intricate patterns. And Kirnuta rolled a 23 and a 14, which is the very thin pattern density and the white pattern too. That is going to be pretty interesting. If our creatures end up looking like the blank canvas that canvas was, but also with the white pattern on top of it, then we probably wouldn't be able to see their patterns at all. They'd blend in with their fur entirely. If this were a normal game, we probably would have focused on their eyesight instead. Taking a look at the genes that they're carrying, their babies are quite likely to be short-sighted too. In fact, I think Odin is the only creature on this island with perfect eyesight, so he's going to have to find himself a very suitable partner very, very quickly. He might be the only one to save the eyesight of our tribe. So go ahead and breed with Kiernuta. Hopefully we can get that to work. There we go. On the next turn, we'll have you build your nest. Now, we don't exactly have enough turns to bring Anna Ressi over there to breed with him too. Oh, and our little crabbit friend is still following. Actually, did he find her a roo? Oh my gosh! He's almost like her little guide dog or something. Her guide crabbit. Well, maybe that would make an excellent place for you guys to settle down and start your families together. So we'll have to bring Fawn up there in the next turn too. Maybe it's even time that we bring Anna back to her family. I mean, she may have been distracted by this bluebird, but she can only stay blind to her son being missing for so long. So now that Aqualoo has her second gem, she should be safer to roam these grasses. We might even have her take point. Oh no! Stumbling straight into the mole is a little bit too eager for her own good. The poor thing. That would have made a pretty good lunch. Well, let's bring you over here, and then you guys can start clearing out a pathway straight over to where we're going to build our nest. In fact, since we have so little nesting material to work with, I suppose she could always guide her daughter back to her permanent nest instead. It just depends how long it takes her to get there. We don't want Kiernuta getting too far away from these creatures so we can have another baby, in case these are born without the claws. Now the rain means another harvest and a good opportunity for us to stock up on some more paints. We'll bring Fawn right up here so she can gather up all of the new berries on this berry bush. And we'll have Anna just go ahead and clear out the grasses around her. Maybe she wants to clear this area out now that the bird is here. That way they won't lose track of their babies if they nestle deep into the grasses like this. Anna might not be able to keep track of her spotty little children, but something tells me the sharp eyes of the bluebird would. I guess we could have Aqualoo scoot on over here to pick up these berries, just so they don't go to waste. And now let's see if we can maneuver Kiernuta over to Anna Resi as she gathers up that one root that her crabbit found for her. We'll probably have to have Odin guide his way again. Thank goodness somebody around here can see where they're going. 
and hopefully that'll give these two just enough time to have a baby together too. We'll set Kiernuta up right next to the berry bush as well. And then I believe we have to set up Anna Russi's mutation menu next. So she rolled a 23 and a 22. That's the huge pattern and the very thin pattern density once again. Not helping her much to pull those dots out of her genetics, but we know that Kiernuta is guaranteed to pass some sort of patterns to his babies. So maybe Anna Russi will still get lucky. Now we'll need to make sure that she has at least one turn to build her nest. So if this first breeding doesn't work, Oh, thank goodness it did. So you can build your nest right on the shores? I think that's probably how your family would prefer it. And then we can still have our warrior pick his berries. Now are we all out of turns again? I think we are. So fingers crossed for the war ahead against the Baryinas. Let's hope that at least one of these babies is born with his claw. Well, this one wasn't. But oh my goodness. Have you ever seen a more adorable little mushroom in your life? What a striking pattern she has. I guess Anna Ressi's hopes and dreams have come true. She might not have the water body, so she can't return to the ocean, but it is in her inactive traits. So eventually a little Adrian might help her family bring color back to the oceans once more. Now let's see if this baby back here was a little bit more lucky. Oh, lucky indeed. Not only does he have the claw, but it looks like he also has Animeme's ram horns. Oh, a baby blessed by Animeme just at the nick of time. He's going to be much, much stronger than even his father was. A foreign strength is nothing to scoff at when so many of our creatures are lacking it. So this little baby's name, kind of ironically, is going to be Hare. He doesn't look like a timid little bunny to me, but I guess it fits his mother's theme. So in the next episode, we'll have to have one more round of babies with Kiernuta if we can. Since he only has one more day remaining, we might as well try to at least breed them for more of those claws. And then I guess it's going to be off to war with the Baryinas, because there's no way that we can reclaim this land if so many Baryinas are wandering around those parts. I can't believe that another one has spawned out there. Another baby Baryina, and it looked like it was getting pretty old too. So I'm sure it's only a matter of time before it's fully grown and ready to attack our tribe next. That's why we need to strike while we still have the chance. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!